Every year I would go to church camp from the time I was probably eight and I would get saved and then I would come home, no change. I met my um, first husband when I was a senior in high school and he um, was into the same things, drugs, alcohol. We partied a lot. He was a dropout. He was um, dealing drugs. That's how he was making most of his money. We got married and it was just ongoing. So it was more than, you know, it grew into a lot more than just pot and drinking. We started doing a lot harder drugs. I was diagnosed with cancer when I was 19 years old. That went relatively smoothly. We, we were married that same year. Then five years yet later, I had a recurrence. And um, during that, that was a little tougher. That started putting some strain on our relationship because we really didn't have a relationship. It was just, we were, we hung out. <laughs> he started um, going out with other friends, hanging out with other people. He had some girlfriends in there. Um, so finally, I just said, I've had enough of this. I want to live my life. I want to have a good time. I've had cancer twice. I'm not dealing with this. So we got a divorce. That was really tough. And so that just led to total um, kind of chaos in my life. Even the friends that I partied with started to worry about me. It, it was in the fall and of 91. And I was not feeling right. And I thought something's wrong. So I took some pregnancy tests and those came back positive. I went to my doctor, they did an ultrasound and came back and said, you're four months pregnant, which was shocking to me that, you know, um, I'd kind of not been living the right healthy pregnant lifestyle and here I was four months pregnant. So I had a lot of concerns there. So then I just got up one day, told him I'm moving out. It was only about a month and a half and I met Gordon. He's gonna be a good guy, he's gonna be a good dad. Um, he loves Blake, he's good to us, he's kind to us. Blake and I lived with Gordon at his home for a little while before we were married. Had to find a babysitter. So started interviewing people and um, met Melissa Bickley, who she attended here. I had been coming pretty regularly to Bethesda, but I felt really motivated. I wanted to go forward, I wanted to join the church. So went forward and um, talked to a couple people after that and um, they were asking me are you saved and I'm like yeah I'm saved and no problem there go home that that afternoon I just could not relax and I realized well if I believe all those things and really love the Lord I can't keep doing the exact same thing something has to be different so that's when I said you know got down on my knees in my living room and asked Christ to be my savior and just tried to give it all up at that time to him. As time went on, you know, just kept learning more and more. And, and I would say the changes were pretty slow and gradual. And I always still had something in my hand that was what I felt like the real me, you know. I think I, when I look at myself, I think I was turning into like a Pharisee where I was seeing myself and saying, well, I'm doing this, this, and this, and these are all the right things. And then I would look at Gordon and go, well, why aren't you doing this, this, and this? You should be doing this, this, and this. And so then I started pushing at him to become a, a Christian man, a Christian husband, but I never once was looking at his heart. And he would even bring up to me that, well, you're just talking about going through the motions. You're just putting on a show. I don't think you really care. And, you know, and we would argue. We, it would almost always turn into a fight. But when my mom was diagnosed with cancer, I would leave work, I would go see my mom. I would, you know, I had to take her to appointments. I would meet with her doctors, meet with the nurses. It was some of the most precious times I had with her, but it was also, it put a big strain on our relationship. And he would, Gordon would tell me, you're just completely ignoring us. You're, you're not paying any attention to us. You're not giving us anything. And he would 
ask for attention and want attention and I would be angry and say, well, I need to take care of my mom. That's what I should be doing. We just started li living two separate lives. Blake wasn't at home, he was over at friends. And I just told him, I go, if you are so unhappy and hate being here so much, you should just go, just leave now. And he said, okay. And he packed up some bag clothes and stuff and left. When he left, I was completely shocked because I thought I could get away with pretty much saying anything to him and he would never leave. And um, so it, it was devastating. It was a pride issue. It was the biggest blow to my pride that I've probably ever had. The process of those four years really revealed to me what it truly meant to love the Lord and how he could fill all that emptiness in you, you don't need to look outside, and then you can give that to other people. We talk almost every day. Uh, I'm even gonna go up there today and he's gonna change my oil and put new wiper blades on and then we're probably gonna go visit Blake at Purdue. At this time, his perception of our relationship is that we're not married and that's the way he lives his lifestyle. I want our marriage to be reconciled. I want you to come back. I want you to be saved. In the beginning, the first two years were the worst. Um, and I didn't feel hopeful very often. I felt pretty, well, it was hopeless. It was desperate. It was, I just thought, there, I'm just going to get up every day and go through the motions of living my life. And that's it. And that's what's going to happen until I die. The Lord started revealing to me how Yes, I know you want your husband back, and I know you want a marriage and a family that's the traditional family, but again, I'm bigger than all that, and all those needs that you have, all those emotions that you need to have filled, all those fears that you have that, that you want to share with another person even, I, I'm the person. I'm the one that you can have that relationship with, and I don't feel desperate. I don't feel like there's no hope. It's, you know, it's going to be okay, and, um, but it's okay that it hurts. My name is Kristen Chris, and Jesus is my Lord. Thank you.